Gilbert, welcome again to our final On The Couch program. Pleasure to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be here again. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about the roller coaster. Um, you know, it's, it's a well-known fact in real estate that a lot of our agents go through what we call the roller coaster. So we'll have three months of great performance, three months of poor performance, and three months of great performance again. Not only are agents impacted by the roller coaster, but so are businesses. Now, how do we overcome that? The roller coaster is, is a normal cycle that a lot of people and a lot of businesses experience. So to understand that um, is important at the outset. The roller coaster, as you've put it, is that um, I pursue goals and aspirations in my business and I work really, really hard for them. And it might be over a quarter or it might be over a certain period of the year. And then once I experience that success, I go, you beauty. And then I reach the top of the mountain and then all of a sudden the next day things stop mm. and I can't get going again and it takes me a while to get traction and so when we look at success in that way we, we see it as being pretty much a one-way street that I've set a goal in the future I've looked at an aspiration that I want to achieve and I've worked really really hard to get it but once I get to that then unless I actually set another goal or another aspiration or have something driving me, then I won't actually pursue the behaviours that get, got me there in the first place. It's really interesting because if you look at the top performers and those people that are, very, that are succeeding really, really well in our business or in the business world, what does separate them and the behaviours that does separate them is it, it's not a one-way street. It, it's more of a continuous cycle. You know, so that I work really, really hard and I focus on the right things and I'm passionate about what I'm doing and I'm improving every day and I'm looking to generate new ideas and I'm persisting through all the things that come at me that could derail me. And then I get to that point where I actually achieve a goal Then I keep working hard again and I keep pushing myself and I keep focusing on the right thing. So it's more of a continuous cycle that's being energised and fueled by a bigger aspiration something that you want to achieve or something that defines you and something that energises you and something that powers you. Mm. Yes. So in, I'm just going to take it back to sports a little bit because you've had a lot of success. Well, the team, the All mm. Blacks, has had a lot of success. And we see it in AFL from year to year where you win the grand final. It's unusual for teams to come back and win it two, three years in a row. Brisbane Lions did. They won it three years in a row. It is unusual for that to happen on a, on a constant basis. So in your world, how have you somehow kept that team motivated and focused on being so successful for a long period of time? We're driven by a higher aspiration. Most people when they've had success generally have a, a down period that follows. So we've identified that. Mm. You know, we have degrees of introspection where we look at our business and we look at our team and we look at what are the risky situations that may occur? So we have a, a talented and able coach. We have an exceptional leader and a leader's group um, that are driving the behaviours on a consistent basis so that as soon as anything occurs that's taking us away from achieving this bigger aspiration, they're jumped on immediately and um, they're quashed immediately and that everyone holds each other's accountable so that they're exhibiting behaviours on a day-to-day -day basis, not occasionally, every day, so that there's no shortcuts and there's no outs on the excellence that's required to deliver what's required in a bigger level, but we just pursue that on a day-to-day -day basis and it's fuelled by this inner drive that's so big, uh, that makes us so hungry, that um, if somebody sort of said that to get this particular goal that you need to go and do something here, then someone will go and do it. Mm. So it sounds like the environment and the leadership that you mm -hmm. have around you is extremely important in terms of avoiding that roller coaster. Yeah. And I think the environment actually sets the standards. Um, there was a study done in the London School of Economics which looked at um, organisations that have experienced success and they followed these organisations around for a um, 12 month period. And what they found was that the variances in performance, whether these businesses overachieved and underachieved, were eight times more likely to be due to culture than they were strategy. Mm -hmm. So they were eight times more likely to be a result of culture than strategy. So 
if you can understand that and take that into your business, so a lot of people work on strategy all the time, strategy, 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 but that's only one part of it. Culture is going to be eight times more responsible for that variation. So in the sporting environment, we work hugely on the culture. We drive a legacy that feels connection to the individual and meaning and then behaviour. Business is no different. So we need um, people driving culture hugely. You know, why we do things the way we do things around here, not just the what, not just the how. So you go to business planning, it's not just what and how you do things, it's why. Mm. You know, wh why are we doing this and, and, and how is it going to connect with the individuals that interact with it? That's what gives the power and we've just seen the Soccer World Cup and if mm. culture was playing strategy in a game of soccer, then well, culture would win 8-1. 8-1. Tell me, how do you do your elite athletes athletes fear success? Because sometimes I think in our environment, some of our agents fear success, and so they don't do all the activities that will lead to the success. Do athletes fear success? You know, fear is um, is a very very comfortable bedfellow for high performing athletes, and I think it's the same in business. You know, like there's times where. It takes a bold person to set an aspiration and to communicate it to others and the longer I've been in this business the more I've encouraged people to put it out there because when you put it out there then you're challenging yourself to look it in the eye and walk towards it. And there are days in pursuit of that aspiration where fear and faith collide. You know, they're like two big waves that come together and you say, can I do this? What if I don't? And in those moments faith must prevail. And um, for the strong-willed athletes, they do. Faith does prevail in those particular moments. So uh, we've learned that to get success, you've got to be able to sit comfortably with your fear. And you've got to be um, understanding that it's all part and parcel of what happens inside you when you're aspiring to achieve something that's big and bold and beautiful. So, you know, fear is... Uh, don't ever worry that fear is part of your performance landscape. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. Embrace it. Yeah. Gilbert, we could talk all day. Thank you again for sharing your insights and being part of our program. We do appreciate you taking the time to do that. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Sardina. Thank you.